This year, I lost in fantasy football and the agreed upon punishment was that the loser would have to wear a dress and do a dance on TikTok. Now, I refused to dance on TikTok and negotiated a deal where instead of dancing, I would cook my friends an epic meal in a dress and film the whole thing. This is that video, and unfortunately, that means right now I need to go out and get a dress. Let's go. I mean, I feel like it could work, but realistically, I mean, that's, it's like one leg. There's no way this is gonna cover me enough, though. How are you doing? Buying a dress. Yeah, it's for me, yeah. <laughs> Sophia, stop. Sophia, I don't even know how to put it on. Do you go over the head? I'm gonna be busting out of this thing. Sophia, I don't know if I can do this. I, <laughs> Okay. I think so. Yeah, it's 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 perfect. Gold sequences, you're calling. You think so? Now that I'm in the market for dresses, I don't know. It's the hardest I've laughed in a while seeing myself wear that. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have a good one. Let's get back to the kitchen. All right, I think I've finally gotten over the initial discomfort about wearing this dress. One thing I will say is these dresses were not made for comfort. These sequins are like digging into me. I feel like I'm busting out of this thing. But either way, we're making a couple really awesome dishes. Give us a little spin. I'm not giving you a spin. Please. No. Please. Jesus Christ. This is terrible. And it is time to focus on our first appetizer. Now I want this dinner to be absolutely epic. So what we have here is an olive fed Japanese Wagyu strip loin. This steak is beautiful. My plan is to make a super premium Wagyu truffle caviar bite. I just got the call. My truffle dealer has arrived. I think I got to change out of this outfit real quick, but let's pick it up. Adrian, what's up? It's good to see you. The whole car literally smells like truffles. I tried this. I, just, I gotta put it like this. What's this one? Whoa. Wow, is that new? Spicy, it's gotta be new. Spicy, spicy truffle dust. That's so good. It tastes so fresh. Oh, this is white truffles. Yes, the white truffle. Uh, is this frozen now? Down. It's frozen now. You have to keep it frozen. If you don't freeze it, it will uh, come moldy. So what, what type of truffles are these? This is a winter black truffle. Winter there, black? There you go. And, uh, Beautiful. Yeah. Where are they from? France. France? I feel like this is a drug deal or something. <laughs> Thank you. The best ever truffle dealer. <laughs> you better believe it. Nothing like a sidewalk truffle deal, but we are back with our party box of truffles. Let's check it out. We got all sorts of goodies here, but what we're gonna focus on is one, the truffle butter, these beautiful tins of Ocetra caviar, and of course, these fresh black truffles. Mexican funny matches your dress. Oh yeah. And this here is the fresh black truffle, an extremely premium ingredient. They're super expensive and they go bad quickly, but the smell and flavor is insane. The first layer of this dish is a really crispy truffle toasted bread. So we got our bread, slice it up. We'll start by just slicing this up thinly. Get our pan on super low heat. We're gonna add in a bunch of that white truffle butter. And we'll just add in our slices of bread to toast. Once they've crisped up, give them a nice little flip. We'll add in just a little bit more of that truffle butter. Our truffle toast looks amazing. Let's move on to layer two. Super simple, and it starts with just some creme fraiche. Just get that in a bowl. And now we'll microplane in a bunch of that fresh black truffle. The smell of this stuff is just unbelievable. And check out that cool pattern on the inside. Now we're gonna add in some of the spicy truffle dust for a little extra truffle kick. Now we'll just mix this all together. For the steak, we're keeping the seasoning. It's extremely simple with just some salt and black pepper. Get our pan nice and hot avocado oil, and in with the steak. Having a little wardrobe malfunction right now, but we gotta move quick. I'm adding in some of the truffle butter to base. And we got ourselves an absolutely beautiful crust on this thing. Time to slice it up. 
Pulled this one right around 130 Fahrenheit, which for me is just about perfect for Wagyu. We don't want it to be too rare so that fat isn't able to render. This looks great. And time to assemble the final dish. We'll lay down some of our toasted bread, some of that truffle creme fraiche. We'll just add on a nice slice of that steak. And to finish it off, of course, we got our beautiful caviar. Of course, got to do a little bump for myself. Something a lot less cool about doing a bump of caviar when you have a dress on, but here we go. That's amazing. And we, of course, got to match with my dress with a little bit of gold leaf right on top. And dish number one is complete. I think I'm gonna wait to do the taste test until the end of the video when I'm actually with my friends so you guys can get some genuine reactions. But either way, I think the stuff on the grill is ready to come off. Our beautiful butts are smoked and they should be super tender. When it comes to football, there are a few things better than nachos. So we're making the ultimate pulled pork nachos. And as you can see, we've developed some really nice looking color on the outside. That is all flavor. And honestly, what I'm about to do is probably my all time favorite activity. Super tender and still packed with moisture. Got that nice smoke ring as well. And again, that bark, probably the best part. And this right here is the texture I'm looking for. I don't like to over pull it where it's kind of mushy. So like having those nice strands running throughout. For a little extra flavor, we'll just hit this with a barbecue rub and just a little bit of homemade barbecue sauce. We don't want to totally cover up the flavor, but a little bit is great. And just one more gentle mix. That right there to me is the perfect pulled pork. Time for our mega loaded pulled pork barbecue tacos. Nachos. Nachos. Starting with our tortilla chips. And I'm a big fan of wider, not taller nachos. We want enough toppings in every bite. And we'll start with some cheddar cheese right over the top. Next, some pepper jack. Make it rain the pepper jack. Next, we'll let this bake for about five minutes just to melt the cheese. We got our cheese nice and melty. Now we'll add on our hot nacho cheese. Unfortunately, yes, this is store-bought. Next, we'll hit it with some black beans, a little bit of red onion, a little bit of pico de gallo, some pickled jalapenos, and most importantly, that delicious pulled pork. Just a little bit of barbecue sauce, some Mexican crema, just a little bit of cilantro, because we're healthy. And that right there is some fully loaded nachos. Perfect for game day, or if you're wearing a dress and need to cook for your friends. Let's move on to the brisket. And our brisket has been resting for just about four hours. For the final dish, we're making brisket sandwiches. And as you can see, we have some beautiful bark on there. That is tender. She juicy. We got that really nice thick smoke ring. And the reason this brisket is so juicy is one, because it's prime grade, and two, because we rested it for so long. I'm telling you, long-term resting is key. And as you can see, passes the bend test. Let's see if it's tender. Oh yeah, just literally falls right apart. Now we'll slice open this point section. You can see just how tender this part is. And it is time to assemble our sandwich. But I gotta be real with you guys. At first, this dress, it was all fun and games, but at this point, the sequins are like completely ripping apart my body. I'm ready for this to be over, I'm gonna be honest, but let's keep on moving. Toasted bun, and I know some people hate this, but gotta show you how crispy it is. Some barbecue sauce. We're gonna start with the brisket flat. A nice hunk of that juicy point section. A little bit of coleslaw that I just whipped up. Just a bit more barbecue sauce. And that right there is a sandwich. We have made it to our last and final dish. Honestly, thank God, I'm so ready to get out of this thing. But every great dinner party needs a dessert and ours is very special. We have the most premium strawberries I've ever seen. These are Oishi strawberries. From what I understand, they're essentially the Wagyu A5 of a strawberry. You know your strawberries are fancy when they come in a box like that and are packaged like so, but they honestly look beautiful. Smells like a good strawberry. Before going any further, I gotta taste one of these things. Here we go. I get the hype. That is absolutely unbelievable. That's terrible. Probably not advisable to cover your super expensive strawberries in chocolate, but gotta try it at least once. 
I gotta say, I never thought I'd be feeding my best friends from college chocolate covered strawberries while wearing a dress. But either way, that's gonna do it for all our dishes. Let's head over there and feed them some food. Max, the tag's still on your dress. Is that what's been scraping me? Oh. What's up, boys? Those Max and Meat Guy eggs. Hi, Mozzie. Hi, Mozzie. I'm gonna be honest. It feels kinda I was a Mikey. I got the meat twice. Four, 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 four,